The big cat at the center here is U.S. soccer legend Tony Sonnet. Tony Sonnet. The big cat. Tony Sonnet playing coach in this high pressure deep. Born in St. Paul, Minnesota, Tony was one of the founding members of Major League Soccer, having played in the inaugural 1996 MLS season with DC United. Goal! Tony Sana sends it home! Tony scored goals in DC's first two MLS Cups, leading the squad to consecutive titles, and he remains the only player to score in back-to-back -back MLS Cup Finals. Propelled by his early success, Tony went on to play in the German Bundesliga and earned caps with the U.S. Men's National Team over the span of eight years from 1997 to 2005, highlighted by his appearance in all five World Cup matches in 2002. He played every minute of every game that summer. At the height of his powers, Tony looked back home to St. Paul and established the Sauna Foundation in 2003 to support community-based organizations and to assemble a supportive network within the community that provides positive environments for urban youth to become confident and productive adults. You can't look. I can't look, I'm not looking. Is this the dream team over here? Yeah. Blow it up. Can I get a marshmallow? You know, I was born and raised in St. Paul. Uh, my dad's from West Africa, a small country called the Gambia. Growing up with my mom was a social worker for 42 years, so, you know, it was always about helping others. For me, so many people helped me become who I became. And I tell people, I said, what was the World Cup like? It was awesome. What was, what was the best moment of your career? It was during the National Anthem, and I closed my eyes and I thought of all the people that helped me get there. It was worth it, and I made it. Thank you. And I waited my whole life for that opportunity because so many people believed in me, and I proved them right. One of the programs we do is we collect and redistribute gently used soccer stuff. So if anyone ever sees Kick It Back program, we got these shoes here, people donate them. Right now we're just sorting out stuff we get. A lot of this stuff will end up in Haiti, but a lot of these shoes will end up on our high school kids actually here because you know there is a shortage of shoes within our community so that kids can play soccer. We like that. At one point after the World Cup, a young girl came up to me and said, hey, can you help me do a soccer camp? The more I thought about it, you know, I had a responsibility to use what God-given talents I had, my network, my social capital to give back. And then once I started to develop programming, I was good at it and it was contagious and I just kept doing it. And 20 years later, we have 75 staff, $5 million budget, and I'm blessed to get to go to work with some really special people. So today our largest program is a mentoring program. We put mentors in schools and it's a dual track. So at the same time that they're helping kids in school, they're getting their master's degree to become teachers. My name is Candace Logan and I'm the executive director of the Dreamline program. The Dreamline program prepares Dreamline coaches to support students in schools from elementary, middle, and high school. We talk about mindfulness, social emotional learning, uh, restorative practices, as well as what does it mean to navigate the landscape of school. So Dreamline coaches are a supplement, they're a support to the, not only the teacher, but uh, mainly to the student, to be an additional adult in which they feel a sense of connection with. Does anybody think that if you were gone at your school, like nobody would miss you, or that everything would go on just as normal, or would kids suffer, or would the administration suffer? Sometimes, I think you don't realize how valuable we know you are, um, and then sometimes we feel like you don't know how valuable you are. We're kind of like building this big Trojan horse, right? Can you go into the school and treat everybody like your brother or your sister? In the summertime, when we're not mentoring kids in schools, we run free sports camps uh, for nearly 8,000 kids a year. Again, that's dual track. We hire a couple hundred high school kids. During the pandemic, we just happened to start feeding people, and, and now we feed people six days a week, and we've done over three million pounds of food. And everything is connected to making healthier communities designed around the social determinants of health. My name is Ruby, I'm the kitchen coordinator. I make sure the uh, children get a balanced, a nutritious meal. And anybody that comes in my kitchen and in this building, I welcome them and I feed them. How you doing, Ms. Nene? Good to see you. Did you bring the good weather? Tino, do you need help? You don't need help, good? Yeah, I don't need help. This is my guy, Tino. 
you know, he was in the system, came out working, and now he's he's one of our, you know, one of our superstars. But when you come out, you know, and they only give you 20 hours of work, there's not much you can do. So, you know, we bought him a house um, down the block, and we gave him 40 hours of work, paid off all of his traffic tickets, and now he's like a model citizen. He's a coordinator here, and he's leading this. So now this is his distribution that he does, and three days a week here and some other places. And so I think he loves his job in the community. I used to take away from my community. Now I kind of give back, so mm -hmm. that's dope. I come from a troubled past. I'm saying I was come from a, a past of crimes. I'm saying I committed crimes, I'm saying, that I'm not too proud of, but I was taken from my community. Now I feel like I'm giving back to my community, which is dope to me, I'm saying. I like helping people. So I'm saying I live to help people. Oh, this is a very important space for the community. Without the Sonic Foundation being here, the only thing will be over here for the kids to do is the library. We'll let kids come in here, play basketball. We give them basketball. They go on the soccer field. We got, it's free for the community to go on the soccer field. So that's pretty dope. We're building a computer lab in here. We're gonna have a little lounge for the kids. A lot of stuff going on here. Me and Tony, we got a bond besides soccer. It's more, it's more than soccer. He a good boss though, I'm saying. He a good boss, like, he, he, matter of fact, he the best boss I ever had. Just in case he, if you ever watched this, I'm saying, Tony a great man, I'm saying, he give people chances. I always try to talk to, you know, people in soccer, and U.S. soccer, MLS, and we're gonna change the paradigm in this country with support. We gotta start helping the community from the ground up. We gotta bring up the base. We gotta create pockets where it's culturally responsive. And, so that's what we're trying to do. We're hardworking people, but we're we're honest people. What you see is what you get. We don't we're not faking it. I mean, it's, it's real people here, and, and we believe in in helping each other out and and keeping it 100. I miss. I interviewed a young lady last week, and she said, "Well, you start to do good, and it feels good, and you want to do more." And we're doing that here as an organization, but we're also doing that with our participants. And when you have a growing number of people that feel good and want to do more, it grows. And we're doing something special here and the word's starting to get out and we're a little known secret. I hope we won't be forever. And we don't want to be because we believe in what we are doing and we believe it can be done in other places. This collection of do-gooders together at a young age, Lord knows what they're going to come up with and how to change the future of this world. Tony, thank you. Thank you for inspiring me, a young Charlie Davies, and thousands of kids that looked like you and me. To dream, to believe that we could achieve, that we would be accepted in this sport, that we could have success.